Washington football. Woo! Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle, and I am joined by my two co-hosts, Michael Hall and Michael Reed, but we are joined by very special guest, Travis Thomas, host for 980. How are you doing tonight, Travis? By special guest, I know what you mean there. I was in the different classes, but that's okay. <laughs> I have a great personality. Me too. Me too. That's all that matters. 98% of it's personality. <laughs> Absolutely. Travis, we are big fans of yours. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out and joining us. Uh, I'm going to start this out with a heater here, Travis. The latest news regarding the Washington football team was that Dan Snyder has filed a motion in order to have Bruce Allen talk <laughs> under oath mm -hmm. in regards to the lawsuit that happened talking to a Baltimore banker broker who was on the side of the minority owners. And he talked on the phone with him for four and a half hours over a six week period. According to the court documents is Bruce Allen in trouble, Travis. I don't know. Listen, <laughs> the petty side of me is going to be all about this. And I, I want to hear every quote. I want to <laughs> hear every answer under oath. I want to know all the dirt, but to be honest with you, the grown and sexy side of me is like, I don't even care. Like who cares about this stuff? I mean, I, I know, you know, we have to talk about it on my show, you guys' show, obviously right. it's a big topic, but to be honest, like half of me doesn't even give a rat's ass about this. I mean, Thanks. just, just to be honest, like it's old news yesterday's paper, the guy's right. gone. Yep. He was a train wreck when he was here. He's still a train wreck that he's gone. <laughs> Dan Snyder is so power hungry. I mean, my God, he yeah. bought out partners, for God's sakes, who were trying to speak sense into this man's head. He bought him out so he could run the joint like Tony Stark. I'm just over it. <laughs> I don't care. It's like, I, I, like I said, the petty, like, Wendy Williams side of me is like, ooh, tell more. <laughs> Sipping tea, right? But, like, I don't even care, man. <laughs> but, yeah. Real fast, yeah. Wendy Williams, have you guys ever heard the compilation of her farting on air? <laughs> Wendy Williams, she's done it like five times, and it's always like, she's like, oh, what? <laughs> Who was that? And it's like, you're the only one mic'd up on stage. What do you yeah, that's something care. you would watch. I was just going to say, I only mean, Reed would know like that even exists on YouTube. I mean, you know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I'm definitely with you. Like, all this off-the-field drama, I'm kind of just like, can we just, you know, stick to, like, what's happening on the field? And speaking of what's happening on the field, Washington Twitter has been going crazy for the past week or so. Whenever Michael Lombardi dropped that Washington football team might be interested interested in moving up to get Trey Lance. So I'm going to ask you, are you a guy that's pro trading up, giving up all the assets to get up, uh, maybe go up and get a guy like Trey Lance, or are you happy staying pat at 19 and just kind of playing it out until next year? I think both answers can be right. I yeah. was one of the guys standing on the mountaintop screaming, by any means necessary, trade everybody. I'd walk in the locker room and say, if your last name isn't Young, you're traded to go get Deshaun Watson. And thank God that didn't happen because that <laughs> is not going well, right? Um, now, we, we don't know how it'll play out, maybe whatever, but I still don't want that to be our problem right now, if you know right. what I mean. Um, so I'm glad that didn't happen. And the organization was telling us without saying just that, that they weren't going to do that. Then mm -hmm. we found out they were kicking the tires on Stafford, but the price was too high. So they're, I'm not going to call them conservative by any stretch. I think they are willing to move up, but I don't think we would see an RG three like move mm -hmm. uh, to move up to go get Trey Lance or anyone quite frankly. And I'm okay with that. I'm also okay. Mike standing pat at 19 uh, and taking best player available. I'm sure we'll get into who we all like. Or, as some callers have called my show and suggested, it's not the worst thing in this draft to move back yep. and yeah. acquire right. more picks and fill multiple holes pause on this team. So, for me, <laughs> I, I, I'm cool with either one. If they believe Trey Lance is the guy, go get him, right? right. But at the same time, with all these other teams going quarterback crazy and trading everything to move up. And we think all five of these guys are going to go top 10, top 12. I I'm cool if they just kind of chill out too. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It's one of those things where that could be a win-win either way. I mean, if, obviously, if you think Trey Lance is Patrick Mahomes, you go up and get him. And so I could see either one. But um, so if the Washington, if Washington does stay at 19, there's a couple different routes that they could go. A lot of people want him to go linebacker. A lot of people want him to go left tackle. Do you? I've heard the argument that some people don't want them to go left tackle because Cornelius Lucas did play a, above expectations last year. Do you think left tackle is as big of a need as people are making it out to be? I think left tackle is always a big need. Hey, I don't give thank a damn you. who you thank, have. Right? Exactly. Right. Because in this league, that position, if you get hurt, which happens in this league, right? Oh, yeah. uh, depth matters. And remember, everyone talks about this with quarterbacks, but no one really talks about the other positions. And it still rings true for all positions. When these guys are on rookie deals, yeah. if you can get production, I, I mean, my God, you're getting a yeah. bargain, especially – you know, a position like offensive line, because quite frankly, they get paid like quarterbacks too, right? Exactly, right. A good left tackle? Oh, yeah. Especially left tackle. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm all for it. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. My wish list is all predicated on all these teams, as I mentioned, going quarterback crazy that we see and all these quarterbacks going early. I think a lot of these guys that we covet may actually fall and yeah. slip. And maybe we don't need to trade up into the top right. 10 i.e. Trey Lance zone, maybe we just have to move up to 12, 13, 14. Maybe you get a Darisaw, right? Yeah. Um, maybe you get who I'm in love with. I love Micah Parsons. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. I, I talked about this uh, today on the show where I read an article that the Giants did not like their interview with Parsons because he gave off uh, Odell Beckham vibes, right? Ah, rock star, right. it's all about me vibes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thank you, Giants. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hope everyone else feels the same way as you. Right. Yeah. And I pray to God this kid, yep. if, if he drops to like 13, 14, 15 yep. range, I'm all for going to get him. Yeah. So I, I think it just depends you know, yeah. on who's there, but I'm, I'm right. fine with going back to your left tackle. I'm cool with that. I, right. I mean, it just really depends on who's available and who slips and falls closer yeah. towards us. Right. God, could you imagine this defense with Micah Parsons be roaming behind this defensive line? Right. And, oh and, and to be fair, Zayvon Collins, I feel the same He's way. Said, same with Jeremiah Obusukormo. Out in yeah. Notre Dame. There's a kid in Missouri who's really yep. good. Uh, Bolton. Bolton, Bolton, I yep. think. Um, there's a number of guys at the, at the linebacker position who should be able to eat behind this defensive yeah, line. Right. I just like Parsons for the, for the reasons that obviously he's very good, but also the reasons that the Giants don't like him. I kind of <laughs> want that kind of guy on defense. Yeah, it's, right. It's almost ironic um, if you don't mind me taking a shot at the Giants because I love to do that. <laughs> oh, why would um, we do that? We're all Giants fans here, so. It's almost <laughs> ironic. Lightly. It's ironic that they, of right. all teams, right. say something like that. When their greatest defender of all time LC, was beat up, Taylor. I mean, he beat up every game. Like, what are you talking about, bro? You should be <laughs> looking for a guy addicted to coke. You should be. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't get it. Uh, yeah. That is hilarious. You know, Travis, I want to get your opinion on the latest comments from John Kime where he says the Washington football team reportedly is interested in Davis Mills and Kyle Trask. How do you feel about those two quarterbacks? Uh, Mills, I'd rather have a V8. Kyle Trask, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I bet a lot of sports, and I bet a lot of college football. I won a lot of money this season betting the Gators, and a lot of it was because I believed in Kyle Trask. Now, they did me no favors when they played Alabama. <laughs> we don't need to go there. <laughs> but uh, other games, they covered for me outright. I mean, they just got it done. And that's how I, I'm, I'm like the black male Kuiper, except that how I scout is because I gamble on the game. Like, <laughs> he actually sits there nerd style with a notebook and takes notes. Meanwhile, I'm holding my betting slip, yelling at the TV, cuss words. My son's like, mommy, what's a mother? I'm like, watch your mouth, son. That's so, <laughs> you know, for me, uh, a lot of these quarterbacks, I can give you great scouting reports on because I bet a lot of money on, the, on their teams throughout the season. Right. Kyle Trask is one of them. Now, there's a knock on him. Now, Mike, follow me on this one, brother. I need you to sit this one out. 
I'm going to have the white boys back on <laughs> So every year, as we know, what happens to the black quarterback? Well, we don't know. Can he read the defense? Right. He's an exceptional athlete. There are some questions character-wise. I don't know. BS. It's racism. We all know it. We know Justin Fields is better than Mac Jones. Just right. stop. Yeah, okay? Right. Stop. But I will say this. There's a little reverse racism on Kyle Trask. Here's what I mean. Everything I'm seeing knock on him is, well, yes, he's accurate. He's a pocket passer. He has a strong arm, but he can't move. He's a statue. BS. I'm telling you from watching Florida Gators games with thine eyes and my money, the kid can move. He just right. doesn't. He's not Trey Lance. But he can he's move not in gonna, the pocket. He's not going to take off and dip. Right. But he can move around. He can make throws on the run. Yeah. I love Kyle Trask. If they mm. draft a quarterback, that's actually who I want. Oh, wow. So yeah. No, I 100% agree. I remember uh, going back a year ago, I said something about Kyle Trask, and people came crazy at me on social <laughs> media like, he can't move. He's not going to be good. NFL, you need a mobile quarterback yeah. nowadays. Yeah. I was just like – Neither could Tom okay. Brady or Peyton Manning. Exactly. Like if you have else. timing and rhythm and you're accurate, you can succeed in this league as well. So right. I, yeah, definitely agree with you there. there. So another controversy going on that uh, Washington social media has been hit with over the past day or two is all these names that have been <laughs> thrown out there. So I want to get your take on this whole name change. Are you are you tired of it? Do you want them to just pick a name and go with it? Or or do you have a favorite name that you uh, kind of like want them to go with? <sighs> I am tired of it. Um, I do not have a favorite name. In fact, I think we're going through a lot of trouble here and getting everyone's input and getting everyone in an uproar just to keep Washington football team. Like, right. you guys know that's going to happen, right? I, I just, <laughs> I don't know. I, from the beginning, um, when they were still the Redskins and they announced they were going to change the name, I was a, a big supporter of Washington Warriors. Yep. Um, but a lot of people said, well, Golden State and – and then there is this still Native American context to that. And maybe they shouldn't. OK, fine. So uh, my buddy Fred Smoot tried to like talk me and everyone else in America <laughs> in the Red Wolves. Uh, yeah, Which, by the way, if I could say real quick, George Carmi brought up a good point. Everybody wants to talk about Warriors, how there's there's already Warriors in the NBA. There's already a Wolves in the NBA, too. There, there's a Timberwolves. So, yeah. you know, I know I agree. And to be honest, my only knock on Red Wolves it's great when Smoot sells it to you like this yeah. ferocious thing, but I can't get past. It's almost like the Washington Wizards, where like yeah. I go to this instant cartoonish, yeah. 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 like high school character, like Red Wolves, like Red. Right. There's um, like two of them left in America. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know. But um, I, I think ultimately, Again, just my opinion. I think we're gonna we're gonna be stuck with what we have, and it's just gonna be a bunch of time wasted ultimately. Right. I, I mean, that's fine with me. Washington football team really grew on me. I didn't like it at all during the summer. I was like, that's so generic, but I get it. But now I'm kind of like Washington football team. It's not a bad name. It, it's definitely grown on me. I guess winning helps, but yeah. you know. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna go back to the draft just because I, I want to get your feelings on Kellen Mond. A lot of people have him. I know a lot of us on this show, all three of us actually like him. We wouldn't mind taking a look at him on day two. How do you feel about Kellen Mond? Hey man, wheelhouse baby. That's one of the teams I bet. So mm -hmm. there's two stories from me on him, okay. scouting report wise, from mm -hmm. a betting angle. I bet on Texas A&M, I would bet against them pre-Jimbo Fisher. Yep. Mond was there. Mond is like 40 years old. Can someone do some research? <laughs> <laughs> He's been so. there forever. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. He's like Van Wilder. <laughs> so before pre-Jimbo, right, um, he, was, he wasn't great. He wasn't bad, but he wasn't great. And uh, I've made a lot of money betting against Texas A&M. Jimbo gets there. Everyone knows Jimbo's going to turn it around. So I started betting that Texas A&M would cover, and they did. And Kellen Mond became what he is now, right? right? So I'm a little trepidatious about him of, is he a system quarterback? Uh, I know he's a great athlete. He can move. He can throw. Right. But I just worry a little. And I guess in, in Washington's uh, case, he would sit and learn anyway. Right. 
So, you know, and you let uh, everyone tell it, we all know that Turner's some sort of genius, right? So maybe, uh, maybe with time he can develop and learn the system. But I just, I worry about that a little bit. Like if right. stuff breaks down and you know what hits the fan, can you make a play for me or not? Or do you have to play within this like scheme? Right. Uh, so that worries me a little bit about him. I don't like him as much as I like Trask, but I do like him. I wouldn't be upset if they drafted him. Right. Yeah, and one of the reasons why I really liked him is because, you know, everyone kept talking about trading up, giving up assets, and I'm sitting here saying, look, if we want to have a development kind of quarterback to sit behind Fitzpatrick, I'd rather not have to give up assets in order to do that. I'd rather use a mid-round pick to do that, and you have the other assets to build. That's a great point, Kyle, but I, I would piggyback this. I challenge people sometimes because – I hear you and it makes sense in theory, but also do we have amnesia? Like right. we all saw Taylor Heineke go head to head with Tom Brady in a playoff game in a building with no fans. And I mean, he stood toe to toe with yeah. the goat in the center of the ring and through haymakers and he's young and literally a week before that, he was bagging groceries at Food Lion. I like, know. I just, <laughs> I kind of vibes. Like, I mean, why not? If you're going to develop a kid and just sit him anyways, he has experience. He's played on the big stage and proven that it's not yep. too big for him. Right. Uh, I mean, he's under a team-friendly rookie-like deal. Yeah. Why not just develop him? <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, I, I get why we're all quarterback crazy. It's a quarterback league. Right. But I almost feel like I've seen enough of him. Why not just let Fitzpatrick do his thing? If, it, if Fitzpatrick gets hurt, we know uh, Kyle Allen can come in and play a few right. games before he gets hurt. Right. And then <laughs> turn, over, turn over the keys right. to, to Heineke and see what he can do. I mean, that, that's kind of where I'm at, even though I just said how much I love Trask and I, I like Mund a lot, too. I'd be cool if they don't take a quarterback at all yeah. in this draft. Right. Yeah. And that's how I've been feeling. I've been doing mock drafts in almost nearly every day. And that's how everyone keeps yelling at me to take a quarterback in one of these mocks. I'm like, look, man, I'm just going where the where the board takes me. And honestly, I, I wouldn't mind it at all. Now, they just signed the tight end, Samus Reyes, and everyone's talking about him. You know, the great Raz score, the relative athlete score, having a higher score than Kyle Pitts in that area. Pete Hainer is one of the most respected tight end coaches around the league. How long do you think it'll take for Samus Reyes to be as raw as he is to come up and actually make an impact at, at the pro level? I mean, I listen, I have no idea how long those type of things take, uh, but we know that uh, there are other examples of guys who are able to make the transition from Antonio Gates to even Mo Ali Cox, yeah. uh, who's a, a local guy who just did it. And he had a fantastic year. I had him on my fantasy team. He was yeah. balling out. He, he was so, rated very high from PFF too. Yes, correct. Yeah. So there is a, a blueprint there for some East to have um, success. But at the same time, it's like, we have no idea. Like yeah. it may not work at all in my fantasy world uh instead of giving up assets to go get a quarterback i would give up whatever it takes to get kyle pitts My man. And put, <laughs> we'll put all this to bed That's all these numbers. <laughs> he's so good that's he's funny so that's good. funny no i mean he's gonna be like one of those generational talents i think yeah, the whole jacket as soon as he steps on the field like he's gonna like kill him when he gets on the field top five ten uh, as soon as he steps in the league yeah exactly exactly you, you know what's uh, funny yo Nobody talks about this because uh, obvious, but we all keep it a thousand here. The dude is Aaron Hernandez. Now, what you hope, <laughs> what you hope is he's not Scarface Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but on the field, he is Aaron Hernandez. Like nah, that's, you're right. that's a same school, same carbon copy, same build, same size, same skill set. And we all know, again, if he didn't try to be Tony Montana, Aaron Hernandez would have a gold jacket. So, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, Pitts obviously appears to have his head on his shoulder and be a good character guy. That's exactly what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. Like people forget, Aaron Hernandez was moving around everywhere on the field in college, like running back, yeah. tight end. He was a split out wide, wide so receiver. Yep. yep, it's a great comparison. Um, uh, going back to kind of last season, a lot of the, a lot of the analysts going into the season had us like picking in the top five again, 
a losing – well, I guess we didn't have a losing record. But uh, <laughs> uh, like a, a three to four win team again. And obviously, Ron Rivera and this coaching staff came in. They coached this team up to seven wins, won the division. So who do you think uh, going into year two of this coaching staff will take a big leap as far as like the current players? Ooh, that's a great question. I think Antonio Gibson. That's my guy. And I, I just think because, um, listen, I'm not saying he is Christian McCaffrey because he's not. Right. But the best ability in this league is availability. Mm-hmm. And I think Gibson can stay healthy, unlike um, McCaffrey. And to be honest, I think he can still be utilized the same way. He, he's not really the home run hitter that McCaffrey is. But my God, when he's healthy, really, who is? Um, I, I think Gibson will get better running between the tackles. But in terms of catching the ball out of the backfield, uh, in terms of I, I think he's good enough. You can obviously with his skill set. We know what he did in college. Line him up in the slot, like right. get creative with him, uh, send him out wide. I mean, I, I just think there's a lot more ways creatively to use him. And so now that he has his feet under him, he has a year in this system. He has a year in the league. I just I I feel like he's gonna pop. In yeah. fact, I I almost think he's the X factor to the season. It's not mm-hmm. Fitzpatrick. It's not Samuel. It's not McLaurin. I think it's him because if Gibson goes, yeah, and he is a poor man's Christian McCaffrey, which I will take. Listen, <laughs> I gotta be honest with you guys. We're all boys here. I want a Bentley. I do, but right now. A brother got to roll with a Nissan. So <laughs> they ain't dubs, they tens, but I keep them clean. So all I'm saying is Gibson, if he can just give me half or 75% and stay healthy of what Christian McCaffrey is, man, this offense is booming. It's going to make right. Fitzpatrick better because we're not going to ask him. He gets into trouble when Fitzpatrick drops back and throws 55 times a game, he's going to give away three or four. You better yeah, believe it. Right. Yeah. But if Fitzpatrick, notice what the Dolphins did. When he was playing well and he was so efficient, it was because they weren't asking him to be Dan Marino. Yep. Mm-hmm. Their defense right. was really good. Our defense is really yep. good. They had a solid running game. We have a solid running game with potential to be special if Gibson does what I think. I think Fitzpatrick can be a lot more efficient and be a lot better if Gibson goes. So that's my answer. Yeah, and I, I love that. Uh, we had Logan Paulson on, and he, he told us that he thinks that uh, Antonio Gibson can honestly be a top five running back in this league. With his ability, he said after watching him on film, the fact that he's so young and raw and doesn't have experience at running back, Still growing, it's incredible yep. some of the things that he's done. Um, is there a position in this draft that is kind of being overlooked that maybe you think Washington could go early? Like I said, everybody's talking about left tackle, quarterback, linebacker. Uh, is there any other position that you could see them going in the first two, three rounds? I think it's bigger than that. I actually think, and I, I've been saying this, this draft is getting so much pub and rightfully so because of all the quarterbacks, right. Kyle Pitts, we just talked about as a potential hall of famer. Uh, people love Jamar chase, obviously uh, all the Alabama. I mean, you name yeah. any of the Alabama <laughs> yeah. wide receivers at this point, yeah. um, the offensive lineman, You know, I actually think, this is just my opinion, this draft is so top-heavy of offensive skill players that will go, let's just call it first round. I mean, at least first 15 to 16, it's just going to be offensive skill players. We all know that. Um, I got to tell you, I think defensively, this is the best draft I've seen in a long time. Now, there's no... The issue is there's no like Miles Garrett or Or Chase Young. Right. Yeah. Like, but there's so many really good defensive players. Certain Horn Parsons. It's a deep draft for defensive players. So what I think is going to happen is, you know, we all look back on these drafts like years later. Right. And we will obviously see all these offensive players and we'll be able to pick out a handful Pitts, I would bet my money on, right? There'll be a couple guys we say, that dude, that dude, oh yeah, he's a dog. But when we really examine this draft, we're going to say, that guy went in the second round? That guy went 24th? 
Wow. That guy was a fourth round, and it's going to wow. all be defensive players. So, wow. uh, you know, from a Washington standpoint, I, I've been saying this. I would go sign Russell Okun personally, and I know he's expensive, but they have a little scratch left. Right. I would sign him for depth for offensive line. That would solidify the depth for my offensive line. And then I would draft defense out the yin-yang. I would get linebackers. I would get safeties. Because I don't think Landon end. Collins is going to work out. We don't right. have enough time on this podcast to talk about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I get some more corners. They need another defensive end, another pass rusher. Kerrigan's gone. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. And to wrap this up, Travis, my last question for you. At pick 19, it's coming down to it. They're not trading back. They're not trading up. The pick's coming up. They're Jeremiah Wusu Kormoa is on the board. Same with Christian Derrissaw and Zavin Collins. What are you doing at 19? Damn you, man. <laughs> All right. I would not want to pull a Vikings from some years back where I run out of time on the clock. Yeah, I completely forgot about that. But <laughs> I would take twice. it all the way down. <laughs> and we would have some, we would have some like real heart to hearts. Um, I got to tell you, I, it's, it's boring to death, but I'd probably take, I think I'd take Darisol, man. I just think yeah. if he makes it to 19, bro, like he's so good. I mean, he's, and much like Chase Young and Dwayne Haskins, but he didn't have his head <laughs> on straight, but to have a, a hometown kid yeah. on an organization that you are trying to rebuild um, and revamp and rebrand new name. I mean, to me, you know, the Washington football team's the only team attendance wise that the pandemic didn't really hurt because no one came to the freaking games anyways. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you're true. trying to get <laughs> you're trying to get a shot in the arm, um, you know, for that kind of stuff. Why not get as many hometown kids as possible? I think he's like from that Richmond area. He went to Virginia Tech. He grew up uh he grew up a uh, minutes, miles away from FedEx. Oh, yeah, he, he said he was a diehard Washington fan growing up. I think his dad take. was a Ravens fan. His mom was an Eagles fan, but he said he yeah. grew up a Washington fan. So. You got to do it. I, I, think, smart. Yeah. I think I would do it. And I love those other names you said. Now, the only exception to this rule, if my guy, Michael Parsons. Yeah, I agree with you. Dro yeah. He drops, all bets are off. No oh, yeah. I'd go get him They're within running. reason. You 15, run up naked, Travis. Yeah, yeah. I'd go get him. Yeah. You, you run up to that podium naked with that pick. If Micah Parsons That's is there, dude, you make that pick. <laughs> Travis. Listen, let's hope Micah Parsons is there, right, guys? <laughs> if I run up to the podium naked, it would be the highest rated draft in the history of all time. <laughs> all time. <laughs> all time. <laughs> can, I, can I go on a Landon Collins uh, rant? Yes. Okay. Rants away. All right. I'm going to give you a backstory first. And then I want you guys to give me your honest opinion. First thing that pops in your mind when you hear me say this. So okay. backstory, I had Sean Springs on my show and I'm interviewing him and Sean Springs late in his career went from corner to safety, right? Yep. Did it with Belichick. It bought him some more time. He played, you know, however many more years, he got a couple more contracts out of it. Right. And a lot of corners do that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I think Josh Norman, uh, I said when Josh Norman was here, he should move to safety. Yeah, That's another story that. for another day. Yep. So a lot of corners do that. For me, I think Landon Collins should move from safety to a linebacker. Here's why. He's already a big safety. He's already right. big for a safety. He gets mad when you call him this. But let's be honest, he's a box safety. Yep. Just stop. You're not Ed Reed, bro. Stop, right. okay? Right. He already plays well against the run and can tackle, and he's physical, and he's big. He's a country boy. Can we just get him some biscuits and gravy <laughs> and grits? And, like, can we bulk him up a little? Hey, man, right. you've been having injury issues. Let's just live in the weight room. And put on some more size, bro. Like, yeah. get a little bit bigger. Can he be an undersized linebacker? Am I crazy? When I said it to Sean Springs, he laughed at me. He didn't even answer. He just <laughs> laughed. Really? You know, 
talking about? He just laughed me off. I said, okay, fine. Interview's over. Kiss my ass. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm crazy. Do you guys? Um, I, I've seen that thrown around a few times on Twitter. Um, I, you've seen safeties do that before. Deion Buchanan did it. Um, there, there's a couple other guys out there that have done it. I think Landon Collins can 100% do it. I have a he doesn't want to. I saw him post on an Instagram story. He got pissed off about it. Somebody asked if he was switching to linebacker. And he was like, I'm not even going to answer a dumb question. So I was just like, I guess that there's that up. But can he do it? Definitely. I think he could. Yeah. I mean, that fits his skill set the best. And it would honestly, it helped the team. They have their linebacker needy, uh, especially losing Kevin Pierre Lewis last season. They yeah. need that kind of range at cover linebacker exactly. that will linebacker now. And Landon Collins would fit that bill perfectly, especially in the NFL with them wanting offenses wanting to spread you out and get you thin. Landon Collins could be an asset in that kind of area where he can defend a run, but also if need be, he's better than your big bulky linebacker trying to cover a wide receiver or running back. He should, yeah. but I know that it's some it's an ego thing. I get it. Football players are a different breed. It's just he should, but we never know. Yeah, I mean, look, look at Mark Barron. It's the same exactly. position as Landon, Landon Collins, yeah. same school as Landon Collins, and he extended his career because you said, you know what? He was the bus. I'm not cutting yeah. to that safety, so I might as well do what I'm good at and get inside the box, bulk up a little bit. So, in my opinion, if he wants to extend his career a little bit longer, especially after the injury, that might be in his best interest. But like Reed said, I saw the story where he was just like, it's, it's not happening. So, well, I mean, Kyle nailed that on the head. It's ego, and it's yeah. – you know, sometimes uh, these guys gift is also their curse that yeah. that ego of, Hey, I, I'm a safety. Uh, I mean, you, like you said, uh, Mike, you, he could extend his career if he did make that switch, but sometimes the ego gets in the way of that, especially like defensive backs, you know, they, yeah. they always corners and safeties uh, right. think they're, you know, what don't stink because uh, they have to go against wide receivers who feel the same way. So yeah, right. that's that mentality, I guess. And I'll tell you what, Landon, in coverage, it does stink. It does. <laughs> <laughs> like um, those Wendy Williams farts you watch. Like the <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you bring it full circle. <laughs> yeah, I get that. That was a stand-up bit right there. There you go. I just smell him through he, the screen. The best part about it is he said the Wendy Williams farts that you watch on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. We call her we call her Wendy Williams because it's always I love it. That's, what <laughs> that's, that's perfect. Dude. Travis, I can't thank you enough for joining us. This was a fantastic interview. You gave us a whole bunch. I love your energy. We are big yes. fans of you in the on nine eighty. Tell the fans where they can find you, brother. Team nine eighty every day, Monday through Friday, nine to noon. We turn up, man. We party. I uh I say all the time, you know, it's it's my name on the show, but it's, it's not just me talking. Uh, I, I don't want to take any shots at anyone in the business, but I'll just say this. One of the reasons I like what you guys do, I've also been on the, uh, on the Warpath podcast as well. I think Corey does a great job. Sanchez, it's, yep. It's an, honor, it's an honor for me to be a guest on Washington football team podcast because I watch them all. And mm -hmm. so um, whenever I'm asked to come on something like this, it means a lot. But one of the reasons I like what you guys do is because you all talk, you all share your views. You're not, I don't ever feel like when I watch you guys and the other podcasts out there, I don't feel like you're talking at me. I feel yeah. like, you know, we could sit and have a beer and have a conversation. And that's, that's what I try to do with my show, man. Like I always say like the callers and the listeners are my co-hosts because right. yeah. uh, I take more calls than anyone in this business. Yep. I give people platforms. We chop it up. We party. It's early in the morning. I'm on there playing hip hop, uh, <laughs> acting crazy, talking about how hungover I am. Like we party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much, Travis. It was yeah. very kind of you to say. We are big yeah. fans of yours as lot. well. I yeah. really do appreciate it, brother. I hope you have a great night. No get doubt, man. I hope kids. I get an invite back, man. I want to party with y'all. Oh, you of will. Course. Don't worry about yeah. that. We will yeah. definitely be hitting you up again, Travis. You do can have your ass on that. You have fun with those kids. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Travis. Have a good one. All right, man. Have a good one, bro. All right, take it easy. All right, everybody. We just spoke with Travis Thomas. That was he's, fantastic, dude. He's the coolest human being we've interviewed ever. I'm just yeah, going to say it right there. I will uh, honestly the say I actually listened to his show earlier today. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I listened to it before, but I was like, we're going to have him on later. I want to like get a little gist of it. 
He's not lying. I was in the office today, like, yo, he's got this show on rocking today. Yeah, like, he, he kills it. Travis <laughs> is amazing. He's so good. He's so yep. good at what he does. And he's right. He's, he's literally just having a conversation the whole time. Yep. And you're just listening to it. Yeah. It's he, awesome. He, that was some great energy. Uh, we, yes. We've had Doc on before with some fantastic energy. Travis yeah. is on a whole different level. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that Travis is awesome. Travis is funny. Travis is going to give our next guest a run for his money in the humor department. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and yeah, that right now. Is, don't give away yeah, too yeah. much like you like to. Um, but <laughs> let's move on to our fan questions that we love and we covet so dearly. So the first one being is we are going to go to Scott Hartley, the Inquirer from the UK. Oh, he wants Oi. to know, what do y'all miss the most when the season is over? Or are you a draft slash training camp person? And what are you looking forward to the most when the season starts, Hall? Um, that's a great question. Uh, what I missed the most, because I, I, I do love the draft. I'm a big college football guy, so I do love the draft. I love the whole training camp experience. But those dog days of like, like late June, July, and like August when there's no type of football, what I miss most is just watching the guys flying around. The competitiveness, because I'm a guy that when I get on the field, sports anything, I'm super competitive. So I just miss the guys flying around, being competitive. Uh. Yeah, I mean, I just love football, so I just miss watching football, really. And fancy, got to throw fancy football in there as well. So Yeah, and if you follow me on Twitter, um, you know, after that Tampa Bay playoff game, I was distraught. I was I was blown because I felt like they could they could win, but also on the side note of being this is the last time I was going to see them in 2020, uh, in 2021, sorry. And uh, obviously I had to wait six months to see them again, that blue. But, I, you know, I do my film breakdowns. I love the draft. Uh, Mike Reed was really big into the draft and prospects kind of got me into watching the film in them. And so that's been that kind of helps bridge the gap uh, for a couple months uh, until the start of the season. So the draft is what I look forward to the most doing the film breakdown, learning about prospects, because the one thing you learn about every prospect is each one of them has a positive that can help your team in some right. way. It's just making that positive work for you. And that's that's like it's kind of like a chess match, not a chess match, but fit in the puzzle. Yeah, you're 100 percent both of you guys. I mean, obviously, you just miss watching football. You miss game day. You miss waking yeah. up, and obviously that. But yeah, I'm a huge draft person. I always have been. I'm always. I'm already looking at the 2022 draft right now, yeah. just because I just think it's so. It, it's not even just like I'm going there and actually scouting most of these guys from 2022 or anything. I just, I love mock drafts. I love going there and finding out what players are like, what what they do, reading scouting reports, and doing. So I, I just, I'm a big draft guy. And then after the draft, it's just so interesting to me to see who's going to start catching fire on training camp. There's always somebody who, who all of a sudden makes a name for themselves. And they're, yep. you got to watch them throughout preseason. I know we didn't have preseason last year, but uh, to me, that's always fun. But like you said, when there's no football, it's always just it sucks. It's so tough. It's so hard to get through my, my terrible life. And special <laughs> shout out to belated happy birthday to Chase Young rocking his jersey for that. Yeah, it was his yeah, birthday yeah. yesterday. Hope he uh, partied in the right way. In response to my text. <laughs> Not like LT. Um, now, <laughs> Scott Harley's yeah. next question was, if you could start an expansion franchise, where would you put it and why? It doesn't have to be internationally. Read. Ooh, that is a tough one. I'm, I'm trying to think of a city right now that doesn't really. You know what? I know where I would put a franchise. You know where? Let me give you. I'm going to put one in Alaska. Nobody's going to go up there in the wintertime and win a football game in Alaska. <laughs> you know Jesus. <laughs> no i'm just kidding i don't know there's there's definitely some big cities out there that don't have teams and then you look at like la new york they all have two teams and so i don't know there, there's some interesting places out there now that las vegas got one that was like my first pick where i would right put wherever but so i don't know now now it's really tough um i would kind of just have to i guess look at what other places have sports for me about. scott um i would say oklahoma city um, oh, you know that's like, true that's a guy oh yeah they yeah. obviously the basketball franchise is come down a little bit they aren't selling like they used to when they had kd and russell westbrook there but th the fact is that's the south right there that's football country you yeah. put a football team down there it's going to blow up and explode and you have the city aspect there but you also have all those southern states bordering that they don't want to be cowboys or houston texans fans they're clamoring for a team a lot in another uh state that i was kind of thinking of it wouldn't make any sense from a financial standpoint but west virginia i'll never forget uh, I went and visited our father-in-law in West Virginia, and we went to, like, the convenience store, which is like, kind of like a grocery store as well. It was 9 in the morning, and there was some old lady walking, uh, leaving with, like, you know, her cart. And at the bottom of the cart was a 30-pack of Bud Light. And I looked at her dad, and I was like, <laughs> why is she coming with a 30-pack at 9 in the morning? West Virginia is different. He was like, oh, West Virginia is playing at 1 today or at noon. 
And it's they're so hungry for football out there. And a lot of people in West Virginia, they're either like Eagles fans, they're Washington fans or Carolina fans or Ravens fans. So, like, they're clamoring for a team as well. But my number one pick would be Oklahoma City. Yeah, uh, I was actually going to say Oklahoma City just because uh, okay. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma football is just, yeah. like, so, like, like diehard big out there. I think that they got a football franchise. It would be just the same amount of hype as, like, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. But – if I had to pick another one, I would probably go – I'd probably put a team back in St. Louis. I feel like I want to see yeah, a team, like, right. you know, get back to that turf and be like – hopefully, like, maybe like another uh, greatest great one. turf type team. So, yeah. And they got their franchise taken away from them. So, yeah. I feel like they deserve another franchise. Them or right. Oakland, you know. Another another cool place, Um, obviously, San Diego. I don't know that they didn't really care, but it's so pretty. But – this would be tough, but Hawaii, somewhere in Hawaii, just Ooh. because the scenery would be yeah. beautiful and everybody's going to want to go play there. I'll tell you what, though, do not put a franchise in the Midwest because that's where people go who give up on their dreams. It's true. It's <laughs> Maybe Utah. Maybe <laughs> Utah. 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 Now, from Wahoo Dad, speaking of 2022, he wants to know what are the most intriguing prospects for next year's draft that aren't quarterbacks? And I'll start with you, Hall. Uh, I'm going to give you guys two, offensive and defensive, one of each. Uh, I'll go defensive first. A guy that I watched come in as a freshman, uh, I think he opted out last year because of COVID and all that stuff, his sophomore year, so he'll be eligible after this year. As a freshman comes in, makes first team all SEC as a cornerback, just first of all, to come in as an 18-year-old and just dominate the SEC is yeah. like one thing in itself. But uh, I definitely put him in that. I think he can be like the next Patrick Peterson in the NFL. Mm. Uh, he can come up and play the run. He had 15 pass breakups and six interceptions as a freshman in the SEC. Whew. And that is Derek Stingley from LSU. Dude's going to be a baller. He's going to be a beast. He's going to yeah. be a top five pick easily, barring like some for crazy sure. injury. Knock on wood. But uh, definitely look out for him in 2022. Like I said, the next, in my opinion, Patrick Peterson. Yeah, and for yeah. mine, it's Christian Harris, a linebacker from Alabama. He stepped in for Dylan Moses last year when he was injured throughout the season and performed really well. He's going to be one of the top linebackers off the board. He's fast. They're saying that he's kind of a Reuben Foster uh, 2.0 kind of linebacker. Hard hitter, but he's fast and can cover a lot of space. If you're looking for like the prototypical Mike linebacker, that's Christian Harris for me personally. Yeah, so are we all just doing one that we're going offensive after this? No, right. You can say whatever you want. Okay. All right, well, yeah. number one, I'm, I'm going to – So I was just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> you can go again after <laughs> me. But. Number one, uh, I'm going to go with another defender. I'll keep it defense. Kyle Hamilton, the safety from Notre Dame. Kyle mm-hmm. Hamilton is 6'4", 218 pounds. Uh, he, he can play nickel. He can play linebacker. He can play deep safety. That's probably where he's best. going to be a free safety. Ooh. Yep. And he's that, but he's not – and Isaiah Simmons and that he's not two thirty, he's two eighteen. So he's long, he's kind of skinny, but he's very good at the run. He's very good at using leverage. Um, he's good in coverage. It's very hard to throw on this guy. He's fantastic. He should be a top 10 pick. He should be a very good safety coming out. Then offensively, uh, I'm going to look at the offensive line at left tackle Zion Nelson, the left tackle for Miami. Just he started since he was a freshman. If you look at him, he looks, he's built almost exactly like Tyron Smith. He's just got those long arms. He's chiseled. He's skinny for an offensive lineman, but, like skinny, like muscular, he's not fat. Um, he's somebody who could be a very high rated tackle, and he's somebody who uh, dominates. He's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, and another guy is uh Chris Olave from Ohio State. Yeah, I, I know I jumped up because I know you're gonna say him. Uh, Chris Olave from Ohio State, Justin Fields' number one target. Uh, if you go back and watch the semifinal game against Clemson, I mean, the dude just balled out. Was he would have been a first rounder this year. He would exactly, he yep. would have been a first rounder this, this year, probably, in my opinion, the best receiver in this draft over. Kyle's got Bateman, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I definitely think that, uh, he'll be a top 15 pick next year. And my comparison to him is uh Will Fuller, just a guy that can get downfield a burner can run the route tree better than Will Fuller could coming into NFL. So Chris Olave is another guy to look out for. Yeah, that's a great one. Now the next question is from Tony franchise. He says, it seems like our running game hasn't been really been great in a sense since we last had a fullback like Darrell Young and Mike Sellers. Is that a position that could be addressed to improve this running game, Reed? Um, not necessarily. The, you don't really see too many fullbacks use these days. I will say, like, a team like San Francisco, they use a fullback. They use them well. I, I mean, Janovich with uh, Kyle Shanahan's offense, that's just his offense. Scott Turner, it doesn't appear really likes to use fullbacks too much. Kyle I mean, check, you mean? Yeah, yeah, Kyle Juszczyk. I don't know. Janovich, I don't know why the fuck I said that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you get, I mean, every once in a while you'll see a tight end, somebody line up in the backfield or, or do old backs. But I don't think that you need it really in today's NFL. But, I mean, 
uh, if you can get, you know, a Mike Sellers, you know, why not throw him in there? Have him block. But you will see a lot of a hybrid tight end type guy back there. But, uh, I'm yeah. glad that you asked that, Tony, because there's one guy that actually does fit that mold, and he's available in this draft. He's been linked to Washington. They met with him, um, and that is Tommy Tremble, the tight end from Notre Dame. They used him He'd all over the line. They used as him an as an H back in the backfield. He would be the lead blocker on all of their run plays. And the funny thing about him, when he comes around the corner, comes around the right tackle, there doesn't matter if there's a linebacker speeding up because, you know, you can't see when you're running around that corner. But he has such good instincts and ability to twitch real fast to be able to absorb that contact. A lot of people will be surprised, blown off. Not Tommy Tremble, dude. When he comes around that edge, he's ready for contact. So I yeah. feel like he's a perfect kind of person that you're thinking of as a lead fullback that could go on the outside, bend that edge, make sure to seal the edge of line of scrimmage for the running game. I think Tommy Tremble would fit exactly what you're saying, Tony. He could fill in as a fullback at any time. Yeah, uh, yeah. glad you brought up Tommy Tremble because we just had Austin Gale on Tuesday, and he brought up Tommy Tremble, said he can yeah. definitely convert to fullback and kind of yep. be that tight end fullback kind of hybrid type guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, to answer the question, you don't really need a fullback per se. Um, everyone knows Scott Turner's offense runs best out of 12 personnel, which is one running back, two tight ends. Yep. So I definitely think that if they want to use a fullback per se, they can like use them in motion, like Logan Thomas or uh, whoever else they have on the roster as far as tight end going into the next season. So as long as you have an athletic guy in the backfield that can block and uh, give you a couple catches out of the backfield, it's all right. Yeah, and I've, I missed this one from Wahoo Dad, his second question for us. If you had to choose one preparation of potato for the rest of your life, what would it be? Example, fried uh, chips, mashed potatoes. He says he's going home fries all day. What are you doing, Reed? Home fries. That's, that's good. Home fries are very underrated. Home fries are very underrated. Um, I'm also a tots guy, but I'm going to go with a baked potato. You know, I'm just a big old, you make a steak, you get a baked potato. It's not that versatile like home fries are. Home fries, you can have dinner, you can have breakfast, but since that's already taken, I'm going to go baked potato. Just give me the potato and let me do whatever the whatever I want with it. I'm going mashed potatoes, man. You can, I just, you know, I love me some gravy, that dark mm -hmm. beef gravy. Get that all day. I could eat that every single day of my life. So mashed potatoes for me personally. You know what? I mean, I love mashed potatoes, but for a while when I watched Scary Movie 2, when he like put his hand and like stirred him around, that like ruined mashed potatoes. <laughs> My germs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I guess, I mean, look. Really but funny. it didn't it didn't ru ruin turkey for you, did it? When he took that. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff the shit out of it. <laughs> 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 oh, oh man such a great movie such a great movie um yeah i mean i'm a french fries guy i love french fries <laughs> so i just keep it simple french fries some old bay on them thanks oh that's another person oh but i want some potatoes right now you guys are right. making me hungry <laughs> now our next question is from henry he wants to know thoughts on the possible trade up to the seventh or eighth pick hall uh yeah if it's for, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I go back and forth on this like every day because one day I'm like, you know what? If they traded to get Trey Lance, I wouldn't be mad at it around probably the A spot because Carolina, obviously the, the relationship with Ron Rivera, they just got Sam Darnold. They can maybe draft out of, or trade back out of that pick, acquire more picks and build around Sam even more, especially that defense. Um, so I go back and forth on it. Like if, It's kind of like Travis said, just said, if they do it, I wouldn't be mad because if you think, like Reed said, he's going to be that guy for the next 10 plus years. Cool. Go out and get him. But if they don't, I wouldn't be mad either. I'd rather just me personally, I guess I'd rather just sit tight at 19 or maybe trade back and acquire more and just uh, maybe use the, whatever you trade back it, acquire that and then use that to maybe trade back into the first round again, kind of like Montez sweat style and double dip in the first round, maybe double dip in the second round. So yeah, I, I don't oppose. I, you know what? It's final. I'd rather sit there or trade back. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think Travis had a really good point in saying this is a very deep draft, especially for defensively, but also for wide receivers and for offensive linemen. So yeah. I, trading back, getting more assets, and being able to build that foundation that Ron Rivera keeps talking about, making sure the assets around the quarterback are well built before they go get one, it makes a lot of sense. Now, would I absolutely hate if they went and traded up for a quarterback? No. Honestly, no, because it, as long as they have a plan, they're sticking to it. I have no reason to go against it. I wouldn't do it personally, uh, per se, but you know, I would, I would, wouldn't hate it. 
Right. Yeah. That's how I feel. I mean, I, I think Ron and them have kind of earned the benefit of the doubt as of right now. So like I've said a million times, if you think he's the guy, Trey Lance, say he falls a seven or eight, like the reports go up and get it. Trey Lance is talented as hell. If he yeah. could sit here behind Fitzpatrick, I think that would be an ideal scenario. And honestly, I, I was looking at the NFL draft trade chart. Um, it, it doesn't to, take that to, much. What, to get Kansas, up to seven or eight, it doesn't take that much. To get up to City, four, you would have to give up a shit ton. Yeah, but Kansas seven or eight, City moved from 28 to 10. For a third rounder and a first rounder, and then the swapping of the first round picks. Right. So it's like not like you, a crazy amount. You're not going to be giving up the RG3 right. stuff. So, I mean, I wouldn't be too upset with it. Um, but I do just think that there's so many. I know that this year's a better quarterback class, but there's so many holes on the roster that you can kind of fill out. Like, this is such a good draft. Like, you can go left tackle, linebacker, second tight end, wide receiver, first four picks and you could kind of be good for another year then maybe next year if you really love saying how how or spencer rattler and you want to mortgage the farm and go get a rookie go for it on a rookie deal um but yeah i wouldn't be mad i wouldn't be mad I, honestly if it happens i'll end up talking myself into it and loving it i'm sure right. because i'll yeah. be like trey lance is my guy well, <laughs> you know, i'd yeah. rather stay in 19 or trade back like you guys and so our next question is from our favorite questionnaire from orange crush when y'all are slash were playing football what position did you play? And I'll start I played with you, Reed. left tackle on Cougars. Did no, you really? You would. That would probably be so fucking hilarious to see you yeah. playing. Football. Oh, dude, I was an alpha dog, man. That was <laughs> sure alpha mentality. But then yeah. after that, I said, you know what? No bueno. Yeah. I played lacrosse, broke my back. I wasn't cool. So then on that, I've just been bodybuilding. Yeah. Uh, ever <laughs> since Pee Wee, uh, I I would play for Cougars as well. Um, I was uh, offensive line and defensive line, and especially in high school. I was like, I have bigger. I was actually, actually had some meat on my bones. Uh, so I was offensive line, defensive line, but I will say there was a test given out for, of the playbook to the entire team and behind the future doctor in Abie, uh, a double, I scored the highest on that. And it's because I knew what everyone's job was. I knew exactly what to do on every single play. I wasn't the biggest. I wasn't strong. But I worked at it and was able to get on the field at one point. Now, obviously, I wasn't a barn burger by any stretch, but offensive line, <laughs> defensive line, that's where I was at. Yeah, uh, growing up, I played, like, for Seneca Sports, like Wildcats and, like, Germantown and everything. And uh, I played, like, wing back and linebacker on defense. And then going into, like, uh, like high school and everything, I played wide receiver and I played free safety. So, uh, yeah, pretty much I just played wide receiver and kind of like that box safety my whole life. Yeah. yeah, on defense, I was a defensive tackle, but I started both ways in Cougars, NBD, but I was mainly, you know, left tackles. Like, okay. <laughs> NBD. Now, Andy Burroughs from the UK, the bridge. Oi. 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 His question is, what would you guys think of making the preseason into a mini tournament? He said they do it over here with their soccer and just adds that extra competition to games that are normally somewhat boring to watch. Hall. Uh... Just because I don't want, like, more injury risk involved, I'd rather just keep it as it is, get the starters a couple reps, and then let the, the backups and the kind well, of fringe I think guys. that's what he's essentially saying is, like, you can still have the backups and everything, but they're still, like, a uh, uh, all right. Oh, with, okay, well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be mad at that. That'd be, like you said, more competition, more, I guess, more people, more incentive for people to play a little bit harder, I guess. So, I wouldn't be mad at that. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet there's some teams that would tank literally just to stop playing in that if there was a way to do yeah, it uh, pretty perfect. much but i mean it's a good idea because you're adding competition and that's always better for the nfl to make the games more enjoyable for everybody obviously there's a reason why the owners are trying to switch to a 17 and 18 game schedule and get rid of preseason games because they don't sell all that much so if you up the competition level more fans are going to want to watch there's more reason for them to watch uh so it's a good idea andy i like that idea a lot yeah i, I think that's super interesting um uh, that i definitely like it i think any time preseason is all about competition it you know most of the time your starters are i, I mean you're who your star guys are so in order to see like what these guys could actually do and like games that may mean something to them i think would be very interesting um and see kind of what what you have uh but yeah i think the injury risk is very scary nfl they're so paranoid about injuries and obviously i don't blame them so i, I don't that scares me but yeah. i love the idea of it absolutely now, our last question is from Maurice Hawkins, co-host of the D.C. Tweet Team podcast. He said, should Washington draft a quarterback with the number one pick or another area of need, Reed? Um, if they're staying at 19, there won't be one to pick there, uh, not unless they want to reach for Kellen Mond or, or 
Davis Dave, Miles Dave, Davis Mills. I'm just Miles, Miles Davis. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> they want to pick him too. I'm cool with that. I don't care. Miles Davis, he's cool as shit. Um, no, but uh, Paying your yeah, pants I, is lame, and I'm Miles Davis. <laughs> if being your pants is cool, then I'm cool, Miles yeah, Davis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're <laughs> not getting a quarterback unless they trade up. And we touched on that a little bit. And we I would all kind of rather stay at 19 or trade back. Wouldn't be mad, but no, I don't think that they take one at 19. No. Uh, no, I don't think so at 19. I think it's going to be moving up or it's going to be staying pat. And most likely, if they do get a quarterback, it's going to be in other rounds. We've heard, we talked about Travis, Kyle Trask, Kellen Mond, Davis Mills, all in the area of possibly being drafted later on. Uh, so I think in that first round, they're going to be looking at a specific areas. And I think that's linebacker and that's offensive line. I think they're going to get their left tackle for 10-plus years or their linebacker they can plug in right away, and they could easily do that in that first round. I just don't think it's the right time to be using that on a quarterback. Yeah, um, I'm with you guys. Either pretty much just stay pat at 19 or trade back a couple spots, acquire whatever else my picks, package, maybe like the extra third-round pick with whatever you acquired, and like I said, maybe double dip in the first round get a guy for controlling for five years or maybe double dip in the second round, get another position to need at the high second round pick or mid second round pick. So yeah, quarterback, like I said, it like Reese said, if they draft a quarterback to go up and get him, I'd probably talk myself into like liking him, but hmm. I'd rather just stay put. Right. I think we all would. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for your fan questions. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Travis Thomas for coming on. Special shout out to my boy Donnie Seibert. It's his birthday today. Six six three hundred pound man. My boy Donnie. My golf Donnie. Buddy. Sign, sign Donnie to play left tackle. Yeah, dude. Donnie yeah, is always right. whenever we're dude. golfing. Donnie literally is in my cart at all times. He almost fought people over that stuff. Don, that's my <laughs> golf partner right there. Donnie, Donnie, happy birthday, brother. All right, everybody. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Enjoy it. We will see you guys again on Tuesday with another fantastic guest lined up for you guys. Shoot. Make sure you do not miss that. All right, it's everybody. Kevin Hart. I'm Kyle. <laughs> I mean, they're, he's just as funny, so you're right. I'm Hall. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Mike. So. All right, everybody. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Washington football. Hey. Oh. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip-up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time.